is exciting. AMD's next generation RDNA 3 GPUs, that's going to be the RX 7000 series, which should be launching near the end of the year here, hopefully like Q3, Q4 of 2022, is bringing more than 50% performance per watt over RDNA 2. Why is this more exciting than the RX 4000 series? Well, the RX or the RTX 4000 series or Ada Lovelace. To me, it's way more exciting because we're talking about performance per watt. We're talking about performance, more performance, less power. And as you guys know, may your hash rates be high and your watts low. This is what I like to see when I'm looking at new tech from, of course, the mining perspective. And so when we take a look at this, obviously, that's a lot better than saying, oh, your power consumption is going to go way up, but you're going to get more power which is what's happening with RTX uh, 4000 series and Ada Lovelace. So this is the first time we've seen kind of that metrics of, of performance per watt. And I think AMD is making a very smart move in, in presenting it this way. Let's see how true it is. Let's see what the memory bandwidth is going to be. As we discussed before, they are upping the bus width on the top end models to 384 bit. President of engineering Radeon Technologies Group, David Wang, said that the next gen GPUs for RX 7000 series will offer over 50% performance per watt uplift versus the existing RDNA 2 GPUs. Some of the key features of RDNA 3 GPUs highlighted by AMD will include a five nanometer process node. Remember, NVIDIA in this realm is getting a four nanometer process node, but it's technically just a modified version of the five nanometer process node. So I think technically from the process node standpoint, NVIDIA is technically ahead on the core here. Advanced chiplet packaging, which I think AMD is way ahead on. We've talked about that with their multi-chip module design. Re-architected compute unit, optimized graphics pipeline, next-gen AMD Infinity Cache, which we also know that for whatever reason, NVIDIA did decide to start pushing more L2 cache on their GPUs. So AMD's already been doing this with their Infinity Cache on the RX 6000 series. They're just a, a step ahead in a couple key areas. One is this Infinity Cache, more cache on GPUs. One of it is obviously the multi-chip module designs. This is where AMD is really shining. And they say a greater than 50% performance per watt versus RDNA 2. Here's the slide that they showed, which is interesting, right? In the information published by AMD, the company highlighted a few key features of its RDNA 3 GPUs that will power the next generation of RX graphics cards. The RDNA 3 GPU will be based on a five nanometer process node and utilize an advanced chiplet packaging that delivers increased performance per watt. Furthermore, the GPU will house a range of new technologies such as brand new and re-architected compute unit, an optimized graphics pipeline, and the next gen of Infinity Cache. So that's pretty exciting stuff in my opinion. The AMD Navi 31 GPU, the flagship RDNA 3 chip, would power the next gen enthusiast cards such as the RX 7900 XT graphics cards. We have heard that AMD will drop compute units in favor of work group processors on its next gen RDNA 3 GPUs. Each work group processor will house dual compute units, but with twice the SIM D32 clusters, as opposed to just two on each compute unit with RDNA 2. Rumors are that AMD has the option to select between Samsung and TSMC for the six nanometer die. I think they mean five nanometer but maybe they go down to six nanometer for the low end. Let's get into more details and see if we can figure it out in this article. According to the latest information, the AMD Navi 31 GPU with RDNA 3 architecture is expected to offer a single GCD with 48 work group processors, 12 SAs and six SEs. This will give out a total of 12,288 stream processors, which is lower than the previous count. This will also drop the overall compute performance unless AMD goes crazy with over 3 GHz clock frequencies on its flagship part. The Navi 31 GPU will also carry six multi-core dies, um, I believe MCDs, right? 
uh, or was that uh, multi cache dies? That's it, right? Which will feature, yeah, feature 64 megabytes of infinity cache per die and are also likely to carry the 64 bit memory controllers that will provide the chip with a 384 bit bus interface. Woo -hoo -hoo. That's what we want to see lower power in a bigger bus, boys. Mm, that's what I want to see. No! I clicked the, there we go. We're fine. I got too excited. I got, I got all excited over here. The Navi 31 MCDs will be linked to a single GC DVA next generation Infiti fabric interconnect and feature 250 to 384 megabytes of Infiniti cache. That's way higher than the 90 something was a 96 on Nvidia for L2 cache. Of course, this cache operates a little bit differently. Considering the latest memory design, next generation Navi 31 GPUs can be equipped with up to 24 gigabytes of VRAM, the same memory capacity as the upcoming and existing flagship from NVIDIA, the 3090 and the 4090. The newer memory spec can be seen as a reduction over the previous rumored 32 gigabytes of memory, but it's definitely going to help tone down the pricing of the card and have parity with NVIDIA while Infinity Cash is in play can deliver competitive performance in higher resolution gaming, which we've seen to be true on the 6000 series right the amd navi 32 gpu is also one of the two mcm multi-chip module gpus featured in the rdna3 lineup the gpu will feature a single gcd which is your graphics compute dies and four multi-cache dies the die is very similar to the flagship navi 31 gpu but has one less shader engine across each die or se the AMD Navi 32 GCD expected to utilize TSMC's 5 nanometer process node, while the MCD will be based on and 6 nanometer process node. There you go. The, so your basically your GCD, so your graphics compute dies, will be on 5 nanometer, and your cache dies will be on 6 nanometer. The GCD will be equipped with four shader engines, and each shader engine has a has two shader arrays. Four in total. Each shader array is composed of four work group processors, eight per shader engine, and 32 in total. And each work group processor features eight SIM D32 units with three 32 ALUs, and so that is basically 128 in total. These SIM 30 SIM D32 units combine to make up 8,192 cores in total. The Navi 32 MCDs will be linked to the GCD via a next generation Infinity Fabric Interconnect and feature a rumored 256 megabytes of Infinity Cache. Each MCD should also feature two memory connect links, 32-bit. That's a total of eight 32-bit memory controllers for a 256-bit bus interface. And so your lower end models, uh, the E32 will still be a pretty large bus. The graphics chip should provide up to 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, the same amount as the existing Navi 21 GPUs, but 33% higher memory capacity than the Navi 22 GPUs. This would bring the performance of the RX 7700 series above the 6800 and 6900 series, offering one big leap in graphics horsepower in games. This would also pump the power numbers as the 6700 is currently 230 watts, but that could go up to 200, 270 to 300 watts. So there is still a power increase going on there on the 7700. Probably also, of course, the 78 and 7900s. We'll get a spec sheet probably down here in just a second. As for the specifications, if Navi 33 is similar to Navi 21, then we can expect a total of 80, 80 compute units, which will pack a total of 5,120 stream processors. If AMD keeps the per CU core count to 64 SPs as the existing chips. Now, what's interesting is that a previous rumor had hinted that the Navi 31 was also going to feature 80 compute units, but would be based on the new RDNA 3 IP. It seems like the 80 CU or compute unit rumor could also be true, but that wouldn't be the full specifications the chip will offer. AMD Navi 31 chips will end up with a multi-chip module solution and feature dual 80 compute unit chiplet dies and would feature 5,120 cores. This would round up to a maximum of 160 compute units and a total of 10,240 stream processors. If that ends up being the case and it looks more 
like or more so than ever it would be then we can definitely expect an ADCU Navi 33 part the Navi 32 SKU could end up with around 120 to 140 CUs and that too could be a multi-chip module design this would make up for a very hefty GPU design and we can also expect it to be based on a brand new process node such as TSMC's 5 nanometer AMD has already patented an active bridge chiplet solution for its next generation GPUs, which comes with an integrated cache and interconnects the multiple dies featured on the Navi 3 GPUs. You can read more about that here. So you have Navi 33, 32, and 31. The question, obviously, so 7900 XT, 7800 XT, and then we get into basically for us the memory. This is going to be, I think, the first time in a while, well, actually ever, uh, definitely with the new architecture, where you have a memory performance increase uh, from the 78 or the 800 to the 900, right? So on the 6800 XT to the 6900 XT, you really had the same amount of memory, the 256-bit bus. Uh, they upgraded, obviously, the bus size on the 7900 XT, which is going to make it more appealing. The po power consumption on these is assumed to be 300 watts on the 7800 XT and 400 watts on the 7900 XT. Given that we probably won't see any implementation of Infinity Cache really taking over here and probably just a slight bump in, of course, the memory speeds. I think we are getting new faster GDDR6, the last I had checked. That does mean we probably still are only looking at somewhere on the 7800 XT around 70 mega hash a second or something around there. As far as the calculations on the 7900 XT, um, we could start seeing somewhere closer to that 100 mega hash range, depending on the speed of the GDDR6 and how much faster it is. Um, I think the, by all accounts, it's possible that it gets up to 21 gigabits per second, which would give us like 120 mega hash a second. It's really yet to be seen, I think, as far as that goes, because I'm not sure exactly what the refresh of GDDR6 is going to be, but these could end up being fantastic across the board, right, for uh, basically power consumption. You really wouldn't be that far off. And the great news, obviously, with AMD is you get a lot more, typically, especially on Linux, a lot more voltage control over your cores and all of that. Yes, it takes you more time to set up, but I'm thinking as far as mining goes, the 7000 series is looking worlds better than the uh, 4000 series from NVIDIA, at least right now. We also have more roadmap information uh, from AMD, they are confirming their next-gen RDNA 4 already for the RX 8000 series GPUs and their Instinct MI300 APUs, and it's supposed to come by 2024. So AMD has confirmed its next-generation RDNA 4 RX 8000 series gaming GPUs and CDNA 3 Instinct MI300 data center APUs in its latest roadmap. While AMD has revealed the first details of its next generation RDNA 3 GPUs, they also revealed the generation the, of gaming GPUs that comes after that. And surprise, surprise, it's called RDNA 4. The new Navi 4X lineup is expected to launch in 2024 and will be based on a, an advanced process node. For its CPU lineup, AMD has announced both 4 nanometer and 3 nanometer, so it could be any of those nodes but I would place my bets on four nanometer node due to its maturity and the fact that it also matches the naming scheme, which will make for some good marketing. AMD didn't share the numbers, but we at least know that RDNA 4 is a real thing and comes after RDNA 3. So we don't have any real numbers at all right now. Nothing, nothing to really talk about. They do go into more information kind of of what we just covered with RDNA 3. So I'm not really going to pop into that we should see a new process node and get more information coming from that later if let's see on the mi 300 apu though david wang also announced the compute gpu roadmap which includes instinct class chips for the ai and data center segment it can now be confirmed that amd is indeed working on a multi-chip and multi ip instinct accelerator which not only features the next generation of cdna3 cores but also is equipped with the next generation zen 4 cpu cores the instinct mi300 gpu technically an apu is scheduled to launch by 2023 
It'll be using the uh, five nanometer process node. The chip will be outfitted with the next generation of Infinity Cache and feature fourth gen Infinity architecture, which enables CXL 3.0 ecosystem. The MI300 accelerator will rock a unified memory APU architecture and new math formats, allowing for five times performance per watt uplift over CDNA2, which is massive. AMD is also projecting eight times the AI performance versus the CDNA2 based Instinct MI 250X accelerators. The CDNA3 GPUs UMAA will connect the CPU and GPU to a unified HBM memory package, eliminating redundant memory copies while delivering a low TCO. So there you go. Uh, obviously, those data center solutions are extremely interesting, but never really make it to us at the end of the day, which is fair. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.